Have you ever taken a map for granted? You've probably never realised that Australia was not geographically consolidated until 1966. Before then, there was no accurate mapping framework of the Australian continent. 1606. The Dutch first begin mapping the Australian coastline. This was the first recorded cartographic evidence of a southern continent. 1788 to the late 1800s. Australia is colonised by the British and inland surveys begins, searching for rivers, inland seas and agricultural lands. This leads to each state undertaking a trigonometrical survey. 1912. There were over 20 different datums in Australia, consisting of four different earth figures and an absolute difference of up to 300 metres between datums. A five-day conference was held among the state's surveyor generals in an attempt to consolidate and determine progress of each state's trigonometric survey. Their conclusion? A uniform geodetic survey of Australia needs to be undertaken. The Australian Intelligence Corps was tasked with this operation. 1914 to 1918. One of the biggest events to ever happen in the 20th century occurred. World War I begins and the AIC is, forms a unit and is sent to Europe. The war places a geodetic survey on indefinite hold. 1920. Returning surveyors and other servicemen commenced lobbying for creation of a civilian national geodetic survey. However, lack of authority and financial backing yet again halts the survey. 1935 to 1938. Lobbying by multiple institutions leads to the creation of the Commonwealth Survey Committee, consisting of a Commonwealth Surveyor General and representatives from each defence service. The committee provides recommendations involving triangulation and trigonometric mapping. However, continual cutbacks yet again cease progress. 1938 to 1945. Funding is constantly deferred by the federal government due to lack of perception of the value of mapping. World War II begins and it is realised how little mapping information is actually known about Australia's mainland and northern coastline. Less than 1% has been geodetically surveyed. The increasing threat of Japanese invasion leads to panic among the government, kick-starting progress. 7th of March 1945. The federal government now understands the importance of a nationwide geodetic survey. With the approval and finally funding being given, the National Mapping Council is created. 17th of September 1945. The National Mapping Council's first meeting is held, concluding that the completion of the geodetic triangulation is of the utmost importance and should have A1 priority. 1951 to 1965, triangulation of the continent begins on the Eyre Peninsula and Bass Strait using the veiled Herbrug T2 theodolite. 1965 to 1966, fieldwork for the primary Australian geodetic network was completed in 1965, comprising of 2,506 control points throughout Australia. It was computed in 1966 using a least squares adjustments to form the Australian Geodetic Datum 1966 coordinate set. The Directorate of Overseas Surveys Great Britain states, The Australian Geodetic Network, a great part of it completed in 10 years, must always be historically considered one of the survey wonders of the world. 1966. On the 21st of April, the National Mapping Council adopted the Australian Geodetic Datum 1966. AGD 66 defined the Australian National Spheroid based on a local ellipsoid that best fit Earth's shape in the Australian region, with origin centred on the Johnston Geodetic Station in Central Australia. The Australian Map Grid AMG was also subsequently established based on a universal transverse Mercator projection. 1982 to 1984. In 1984, the readjusted AGD 84 datum was introduced based on additional observations but not adopted by all states. However, it was already being recognised a geocentric datum, one cent on an Earth mass, would be required due to advances in satellite technology. 1994 to 2001. The Australian government, realising the vast socio economic benefits of GPS, initiated development of a geocentric datum. Unlike AGD 66 and AGD 84, GDA 94 was Earth-centred opposed to the regional model of old. GDA 94 is based upon a global framework and referenced to a series of fixed control points throughout the Australian tectonic plate as of Epoch 1994. Coordinates differ by approximately 200 metres between the two datums, depending on the exact location in Australia and with a net shift to the northeast. GDA 94 initially coincided with WGS 84, the basis for GPS control, relative to the worldwide international terrestrial reference frame upon which WGS 84 is based. 
However, the two are slowly diverging by 7 cm a year due to movement of the Australian plate. While this does not affect relative measurements within the datum, raw absolute GNSS measurements in the WGS84 system rely on a transformation to convert to GDA94. By 2001, all states had adopted GDA94, which was utilised until early 2019 when the static GDA2020 datum was introduced. GDA2020 is based on ITRF 2014 at epoch January 1st, 2020 resulting in an approximate horizontal shift 1.8 metres northeast due to the movement of the Australian plate. However, without the foresight and persistence of countless individuals, Australia's world-leading geodetic network would never have existed.